Welcome to another episode of the Understanding Crypto series by Thomas Plunkett. Today, we're going to take a look at another Ethereum security anti-pattern, uh, specifically taking a look at the delegate call library vulnerability. Uh, this video is under Creative Commons license. All right, so call and delegate call operation codes are pretty useful in allowing Ethereum developers to modulize their code. Delegate call in particular is useful for creating libraries. You know, normal call operations, uh, you know, the standard external message calls to contracts are handled by the call operation code. Where, and, and the code is run in the context of the contract that is being called. The delegate call operation code is almost identical to call, except that the code executed at the targeted address is run in the context of the calling contract and the message sender and the message value remain unchanged. And that delegate call feature allows developers to deploy reasonable code once and call it from future contracts, essentially creating libraries. Um, but this is a big difference, this idea that the, the delegated call is executed in the context of the calling contract. And we're going to take a look at some potential vulnerabilities that can be created if you do this. Um, you know, basically, this is going to allow a smart contract to dynamically load code from a different address at runtime, the storage, the current address, and the balance all refer to the calling contract. So here's an example of an attack. So we've got these three contracts. We've got um, the developer who is creating the vulnerable contract. So we'll call this the hack me contract. And then he's also created a library that he's using. Um, and then we've got our attacker. Our attacker is creating the attack contract. So in this case, you know, Alice is our, our nice developer and Eve is the evil attacker. So Alice has created live and deployed it. Now she's created this vulnerable contract called hack me that is referring to live. And you can see in her payable function, she's using delegate call to delegate her ownership over into a uh, LIBE. Eve now is gonna call a attack. And her attack contract uh, has a, is gonna allow her to interact with HackMe. She's basically calling a function on HackMe. In this case, she's gonna call the fallback function. And she's going to uh, send in a message that will then piggyback along on this delegate call message and then do stuff over here in the library. It'll allow her to take over the HackMe contract, essentially. Uh, and so she can change the owner of HackMe from being Alice to being herself. Um, you know, that's, that's a pretty serious problem if you've, you've given up ownership of your contract, particularly if there's money in it. Uh, and in fact, this happened in real life. So and we'll talk about some of the examples of real life in a minute. But first, let's talk about how you prevent this. Well, because this error came along pretty early on, Solidity, uh, the Solidity developers came up with a way to prevent the attack. They created a library keyword uh, that can prevent this type of attack. The library keyword is stateless. Um, so, it's, 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 uh, so you can't modify the state of the library directly. And it also can't be self-destructed. As we'll see, one of the at potential attacks that can happen if you don't use this library keyword is someone comes in and they destroy your contract and all of a sudden your, your ether is no longer accessible. You know, forcing libraries to be stateless uh, gets rid of some of the problems with the storage context uh, and it prevents attacks where the attacker is gonna modify the state of the library to affect the contracts that depend on the library. So as a general rule of thumb, if you're going to use delegate call, pay careful attention to the calling context of both the library contract and the calling contract. And whenever possible, if you're going to build a library, make that library stateless using the library keyword. All right, so let's talk about uh, the real life uh, hack that caused a loss of a lot of money. So this is, uh, we're also, this is the second parity multi-sig wallet hack. We'll also talk about later the other parity multi-sig hack. Um, but this, uh, there were two contracts. There was a wallet contract and there was a wallet library contract, which again was being called using delegate call. And this was before the library keyword was widely used. Uh, the intended operation of these contracts was to have a low cost deployable wallet contract whose code base and main functionality were in the wallet library contract. So we have this 
Um, and so the idea was there would be lots of these little wallet contracts that would be interacting with this one wallet library contract, which would actually have given you all the capabilities. However, that wallet library contract was not a stateless li library. Instead, it had its own state and it was a contract. And so you could send calls directly to the wallet library contract and the wallet library contract uh, using delegate call could be initialized and became owned. And so a user did that. Similar to our example of Ellis and Eve, a user came in as Eve, they became the owner of the library contract, and then they called the, uh, the kill function or the self-destruct function. Um, and because they were the owner, they were allowed to do that. And so the library contract self-destructed. As all the wallet contracts out there referred to the library contract, uh, and there was no longer a wallet library contract, those, uh, all those other wallet contracts no longer worked and you couldn't get the ether out of those wallet contracts. So a lot of ether was permanently unrecoverable. Yeah, that was in these parity multi-sig wallets. So this has been another short little video on Ethereum uh, vulnerabilities. In this particular case, we're taking a look at the delegate call anti-pattern, uh, which can be solved by using the library keyword. Uh, tune in next time when we'll dive in deeper into Ethereum security anti-patterns.